Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. We're talking about the herbal medication known as berberine in this lesson. So berberine has been trending online recently. It's been referred to as nature's ozempic as it's believed to have similar effects to Ozempic. So we're going to talk about the biochemistry behind how berberine works. We'll also talk about some of the research findings on its effects on weight loss and other metabolic parameters. And we'll also talk about some of the important side effects that we should look out for when we're using berberine. So berberine is a nutraceutical. It is a herbal medication that is used to treat certain health ailments. And it is more specifically a plant alkaloid that is extracted from plants including golden seal or also known as hydrastis canadensis and barberry, which is also known as berberus vulgaris. It is derived from the plant leaves, stems, and roots. And in the past, it's been used as a treatment for particular forms of diarrhea. But more recently, it's been gaining traction as potential treatment for particular health conditions like type 2 diabetes and obesity, as there have been findings showing that berberine can not only improve insulin sensitivity, but can also help lose weight. So we're going to talk about those findings and how they might occur later on in this lesson. But before we talk about those research findings in detail, let's talk about how berberine works biochemically and compare that to how Ozempic works. We'll first talk about how Ozempic works. So we'll talk about Ozempic or otherwise known as Wagovi. Wagovi is a different formulation of Ozempic. And this medication is also known as semaglutide. So the way Ozempic works is that it binds to what are known as GLP-1 receptors or glucagon-like peptide 1 receptors. So it would be considered a GLP-1 receptor agonist, meaning that it binds to and activates this receptor. So these GLP-1 receptors are located in the brain, the gastrointestinal system or GI system, and the pancreas. So when Ozempic binds to GLP-1 receptors in the brain and the gastrointestinal system, it leads to a sensation of satiety. Satiety is feeling full. So in the brain, when you activate these receptors, it leads to a sensation of not having an appetite. It suppresses your appetite. And when you bind to these receptors in the stomach, more specifically, it will actually reduce gastric emptying. So what happens is when you eat, your stomach holds onto food longer. So it feels like your stomach gets fuller quicker. So this is the reason why you feel a feeling of satiety or a feeling of fullness quicker. And then in the pancreas, Ozempic can also bind to GLP-1 receptors in the pancreatic beta cells. These are the cells that release insulin, and this stimulates the secretion of insulin. So these are the mechanisms as to how Ozempic works. Now let's talk about the mechanism as to how berberine works. So berberine actually operates through a completely different mechanism. It actually activates a particular protein known as AMPK or AMP activated protein kinase. This particular protein is typically activated by AMP, which is a signal of the cell having low energy stores. This would be something that we would see in fasting states and also by exercise as well. And when AMP is activated, it has many different effects. Some of these include activating a protein known as TBC1D1. This activation will lead to the translocation of glucose transporter 4 or GLUT4 channels into the cell membrane, allowing glucose to be taken up into the cell. So it helps to bring in glucose from the blood. So this is an insulin independent mechanism. And AMPK activation also leads to the activation of ATGL or adipose triglyceride lipase. This is an enzyme involved in fatty acid catabolism. So this is the breakdown or metabolism of fatty acids. AMPK can also inhibit ACC or acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which is an enzyme used for making fatty acids. So it can suppress the new formation of fatty acids. AMPK activation can also inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. This is the very important enzyme involved in cholesterol synthesis, so it can suppress cholesterol synthesis. It also has other important effects as well, including inhibiting mTOR, which is involved in protein synthesis. It also activates OK1, which is involved in autophagy, and it can also inhibit gluconeogenesis in the liver. Gluconeogenesis is the formation of glucose from non-glucose substrates, so it can help reduce fasting blood glucose levels. And berberine can also have other effects as well, including inhibiting intestinal alpha-glycosidase. Alpha-glycosidase is an enzyme in the intestines to help break down glucose. So if you're not breaking down the glucose, you're not going to absorb the glucose from the gastrointestinal system. It's also involved in changing your gut microbiome. So berberine can affect the gut microbiome. And it also inhibits something called PPAR gamma, which is peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, and also LXRs which are involved in adipocyte differentiation or the differentiation of immature fat cells into mature fat cells. Now that we know those important biochemical effects of berberine, let's talk about some of the research into its possible weight loss effects. 
So the information we're going to talk about here comes from this meta-analysis entitled The Effect of Berberine Supplementation on Obesity Parameters, Inflammation, and Liver Function Enzymes, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Control Trials. So the authors took many different randomized control trials in humans, and they narrowed it down into 12. So overall, it was a meta-analysis of 12 randomized control trials. And these 12 randomized control trials all use different doses of berberine, anywhere from 300 milligrams per day to 1,500 milligrams per day, and also quite variable durations of treatment, anywhere from one month to 24 months. So quite a variation in both doses and time. But what was found when the researchers actually weighted all of the findings from all of these 12 randomized control trials is the following. There was a significant weight loss, which was considered or classified as moderate, and a reduction in body mass index. And more specifically, what was found was that the weighted mean difference, or the WMD, so this would be all of the differences found in the 12 randomized control trials weighted and averaged. What was found was that on average, patients lost approximately 2.07 kilograms, which is roughly 4.5 pounds. And patients also lost on average 0.47 kilograms per meter squared. This is the reduction in body mass index. Patients also had a reduction in weight circumference as well. On average, the weighted mean difference here was a loss of 1.08 centimeters of their waist circumference. And then these randomized control trials also looked at some other parameters as well, including liver enzymes because a lot of these patients had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But what was found was that there was no significant change in liver enzymes. So those are some of the big weight loss findings of berberine from that meta-analysis, but there are other potential metabolic benefits as well. Some of these come from this review article entitled The Effect of Berberine on Weight Loss in Order to Prevent Obesity, a Systematic Review. So some of these findings we're going to talk about here were found in animal models. So it's not going to be like the one we talked about before where they were found in humans. So that is also something to make note of as well. So what was found was that some of the studies looked at in this review article did find improvements in insulin sensitivity. There was improvements in fasting blood glucose. This is what we would expect if berberine is acting through AMPK. It's inhibiting gluconeogenesis in the liver, which is going to suppress fasting blood glucose levels. And it's also bringing in more glucose from the blood through GLUT4 transporters that we would find in skeletal muscle, for instance, via activation of that TBC1D1 we talked about before. Other studies that were discussed in this review article noted decreased triglyceride levels and decreased LDL and total cholesterol levels. Again, we talked about that mechanism before. Activating AMPK can lead to activation of ATGL, which is involved in fatty acid catabolism, and also in the inhibition of HMG-CoA reductase, which is involved in cholesterol synthesis. So these findings also make sense as well. And then another interesting finding in one particular study in this review noted increased brown adipose tissue. So brown adipose tissue is used as a source of thermogenesis. So it's used to generate heat. It's a fat that is easier to burn off than white fat. So if you're converting white fat into brown adipose tissue, it can be easier to get rid of. So what was found was that in one of these studies, there was increased brown adipose tissue as well. So those are the findings of many studies collated into that meta-analysis and review article, but we should talk about some of the limitations of those particular studies that were looked at. Some of the limitations of those studies included that the studies had small sample sizes, so low statistical power. As mentioned before, there were varying doses and varying durations of time used. So it's hard to say how much of an effect that berberine could have over longer periods of time and with particular doses. Another important thing to think about was that different patient populations were studied. So some studies looked at normal weighted individuals, some looked at obese patients, some looked at patients with PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, and some looked at non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients. So all of them are going to respond differently to changes in insulin sensitivity and glucose and weight loss as well. So this is something to think about. And some of those findings we talked about from that review article more specifically have only been so far found in animal models. And then some other important factors to think about include dietary and medication interactions are not fully known or understood. And the short-term and long-term effects of berberine are less well understood. So now let's briefly talk about the adverse effects of using berberine or the side effects that we may see. Some of these include bowel habit changes. So bowel habit changes can include diarrhea and or constipation. So this is due to that inhibition of alpha-glycosidase we talked about before. So alpha-glycosidase, again, is that enzyme 
located in the intestines that metabolizes and breaks down glucose into smaller pieces for absorption. If we're not breaking down that glucose, it can pass into the large intestine in its complete form and it can draw water to it and cause diarrhea. We also talked about the fact that berberine can affect the gut microbiota. This can lead to changes in bowel habits as well, so it can lead to diarrhea and or constipation. And we did talk about the fact that berberine in the past has been used as a treatment for diarrhea. This seems to be more the case where berberine has been used as a treatment for secretory diarrhea. Berberine is also known to slow down the gastric motility to leave gastric contents into the gastrointestinal system a bit longer. So it may play a role in treating some types of diarrhea, but it can itself cause diarrhea as well. And berberine can also have the adverse effect of causing nausea and vomiting. And berberine can also cause pregnancy-related issues or effects. So when using berberine, it can actually exacerbate jaundice in neonates, increasing the risk of cornicterus. So it's best to avoid berberine use during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So if it gets into the neonate, it can exacerbate neonatal jaundice and increase the risk for cornicterus. So something to also think about as well. Please check in my lesson on berberine and its other health effects, including possible anti-cancer effects and antimicrobial effects. And also please check in my lesson on lycopene as well. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.